Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the Storytelling Chronicles Life Lessons and Logistics. I have a great guest with us today, Mark Dirks, CMO of Blue Grace Logistics and the president of the TMSA. Let's go. Life, lessons, logistics. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Again, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Mark and I have been in the back room uh, having great discussions. Uh, we can't wait to discuss what we were discussing with everyone out there. So thanks, uh, Mark, for joining me today and taking the time out of your busy day. You bet, Jeff. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. You know, we are in trying times right uh, right now, Mark, and I'm preaching to the choir. I think everybody knows that out there. You know, what we want to try to do here is to uncover the sustainability code. And what I mean by that is how do we market uh, ourselves in a bear market? And how do we tell prospects what we do, how we do it, when we do it, why we do it, and gain that momentum that's needed to bring us into 2024 because the way that the market is right now and i think you'll agree it looks like it's going to be flat through the rest of the year and even to the first quarter and the second half of 2024 so what do we need to do to get prepared for it yeah i mean i th i think that's pretty well said um the market is definitely in, in in balance or or in that bear state that that you said and you know i do think we might get some little lifts of some seasonality right that might last 60 90 days or whatever but the ongoing cycle of be, being more in a in a high demand or a, a bull market is is probably a ways away and when I think about marketing in, in a market like this, there's two things that I think about. Service is the number one thing. Um, execution and service and how you're taking care of your customers in this type of a market um, is paramount. And, you know, people will change providers uh, and try new things based on price, but eventually price gets to the bottom and there, there's nowhere else it can go. So a lot of, of in my experience, in, 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 in my past, a lot of, of what I've seen people make change on is due to service, service failures or service success. It can be either one, uh, but I think marketing around service and high execution is extremely important. And then I also would reflect on uh, uh, that price deal, you know, prices, they're, they're going to hit a bottom. They can't go any, any, any lower. Well, how else can you take cost out of the supply chain? How else can you optimize or engineer better ways of operating your supply chain? So this whole idea of supply chain engineering as a marketing topic, as a, as associating your brand to, um, things like managed logistics, logistics outsourcing, all of those kind of services uh, people look at in these types of markets uh, to to improve their efficiency and, and, and reduce their OpEx. Yeah. And as we were talking back in the green room, um, you know, some of the things that are missing that a lot of brokers out there are service providers failed to take into consideration is how important it is to bring in the sales and operations team into the discussions, uh, especially on the customer prospect side, if you get that far. Um, but to understand where are they going, where are they taking their business and how can you help them to get to where they need to be? Because, you know, when you talk about ramp up and new products and stuff that's going to be obsolete and what's going to take their place. You know, you have to be aware of this because you have to be able to translate that pertinent information, you know, if you're a shipper to your service provider, to your broker, to your carrier, your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I commented in the green room about whenever I do any kind of brand messaging exercise uh, and I'm talking to shippers, of, of course, you're talking to the transportation, procurement, logistics, 
uh, teams and whatnot, but I always go deeper into the organization. And I do talk to the sales teams that are selling to their customers, right? Talking to the customer service teams, right? Who have to service, you know, I just talked about marketing service and execution. Well, they have to service their clients as, as well. Um, talking to finance, talking to IT, they're all connected to the supply chain and to the logistics in, in varying uh, amounts. But the, the fact is that they are all connected. And you even joked, like, it's why, why don't more people understand that? Why don't more people within these organizations know that? But the one thing that I, I beyond kind of a research messaging, those kind of things, one thing that, that goes beyond that is if you're in a sales role for a shipper, right and you're selling widgets and you have a competitor that's selling the same widget the pricing is the same um you know what's the what what's the difference right why should i go with you and one thing that we think about and we talk to our clients about is that you can use logistics as a competitive advantage so if we have the same product if we have the same service if we're selling the same thing and the decision comes down to what we want logistics to be that what thing that we able to uh you know have better service have better planning meet the, your customers demands and if our supply chain can deliver our product a little bit faster intact with no returns and satisfy your clients gosh that's a really competitive advantage for you and let us show you how that gets done yes um i, I would definitely agree on that because you have to have a differentiator uh, between you and your competitors. I mean, let's face it, Mark, we're all in this together and we're all kind of traveling the same speed. Another big thing that is missing in the industry, and I think you'll agree with me, is that a lot of brokers out there, when they bring in new talent, they don't have that training in place in order to set them up for success. Namely, um, you know, coming in, say you're a college grad, you're not going to know what your niche is. You're not going to know what the product is for selling. And unfortunately, a lot of these companies just dump these new folks into chairs, give them a phone and a computer and say you're on your way uh, with no real guideline, SOP, work instructions or whatever to help them do that. What are your thoughts on that? And how 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 important is that for any organization when you come in as a new person into a new role? Yeah, I think training is at the heart of everyone's success and learning and development, even even you know, through our our journeys and our careers and our stages. In supply chain, you're you're always learning, but you're learning from others, right? You're uh, you're you you're utilizing training, and a couple of thoughts on the training piece of it. I think some organizations feel or think if they if they can't train in house, then there's no other options. And I would tell you, especially even through some of the partners, like at the TMSA, what we were also talking about, there are training organizations out there that you can outsource your training to. And these individuals are from the industry. They've trained other great big brands, and I'm not going to name them, but, but, but they're professionals from those environments. And they really do know how to, how to do it. They know what needs to be done, and they know the skills, both soft and hard, that you're going to that you were going to need to, to be successful in those roles. I also think in training is each role is unique. An account manager is not the same thing as a salesperson. A salesperson is not the same thing as a sales manager. A sales manager is not the same thing as a branch or an office manager. These are all different roles that require different types of training from communication to closing to leadership to all these different things. And I don't know that we compartmentalize or, or build strategy and plans around the training uh, for our teams like, like we need to. Uh, but I would say if, if I were the CEO of one of these organizations, I would be asking that question, where's my training? What does it look like? And how am I getting ROI out of my sales teams and out of my account managers? Because when you think about a college individual coming out of school you mm -hmm. name those things that they don't know they get a phone and a, and a and a computer they don't even know how to answer email 
right? They, they know how to answer their parents on email and maybe an internship email and things like that. But when you hit the desk, you're going to get 400 emails a day. Do you know how to deal with that? And that's a basic, that's a basic, we all take that for granted. But right. those new, those new people, they don't know that. So setting up even the most, you know, rudimentary types of training beyond product, beyond service, beyond value and differentiation, some mm -hmm. of those things to help set them up for success are you're gonna really flourish if you spend some time thinking about what your strategy is and how to help these these new people coming in. Yes, I agree, you know, and coming from the warehousing side of the business and being on that other side, because I'm not a sales guy, I always say it. Um, I'm an operations guy, I'm a logistics guy, you know, I've seen a lot of different things. And I think what's really pertinent for all the brokers out there is that they should have some kind of plan when these new people come on board, especially if they're college grads looking for their first role. But they should link up with a local DC or a warehouse and saying, well, part of our training structure is to have you go and, and see how a warehouse and distri distribution center operates. Because the, the enormous amount of experience that you get when you see, you know, the rubber hits the road and what they do, how they do it, when they do it, why they do it and get that concept in. You have a better perspective of the industry and what you're going up against, especially when you get those phone calls or somebody puts something in an email, like you said, how do I answer this? Oh, yeah, you know, like I saw that. Oh, yeah, I understand that. I've asked the right questions, you know. Um, it's, it's a shame, but I want to get your thoughts on that. You know, I know it's very difficult, but I just think having that uh, that upper uh, that upper hand by knowing how those mechanisms of logistics kind of work you're not going to learn it in one day or a week but just to have that perspective your thoughts on that yeah well i'll share a, a personal um experience so prior to my role here at blue grace i had a long history in logistics but i took some time away i took about four to five years away from logistics i owned my own marketing agency uh, we still had some supply chain clients, but we were focused on tech, healthcare, manufacturing, um, niche markets like electrification, sustainability, things like that. Mm -hmm. Out of my all B2B. So these are organizations, right, that we know and that we sell to, we communicate with and service each and every day. Um, and I would tell you on the manufacturing clients that I had, we would go to their operations and we would say, hey, take us through how you guys manufacture your products and and what that process and life cycle looks like. Every single one of those tours for every single one of those manufacturing clients ended up in the warehouse, the cross docks and shipping in and out, inbound and outbound transportation. So the importance of, yeah, we're working at a 3PL uh, and, and understanding how all that stuff works. That's all great. But the lives of all these businesses that we serve also, and you can find that out in marketing. You can find that out through branding. You can find that out, but you have to be looking for it and you have to be, you know, you have to be smart about um, you know, taking those opportunities when they're presented to you and really understanding that. But I was just trying to help people market, you know, their, their brands and, and create content for them. But when they went to explain their business, it all ended up in that warehouse and, and they're and in and outbound to their, to their customers. So very valuable. Yes. Um, extremely valuable. You know, what, what do you say to, uh, new business owners, new brokers that are coming in, especially this time, um, being that we're in such a bear market, what would you tell them the best way to market and handle the business and the economy that's being fed to you right now for sustainability to get you throughout the year and prepare you for the 2024 season? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say, I, I always start here, Jeff, the number one thing is your people. And we were just talking about that, right? Yeah. Who these people are, how do you get them trained, and how do you have them carry your message out into the marketplace? 
Um, I do believe that someday, maybe not in our lifetimes, but technology will continue to get better within the supply chain and we will continue to get big gains on efficiency um, and, and lower our costs and not be so heavy on the, the, the people maintenance. But the people will always be tied to relationships on the carrier side and the shipper side they're always going to be there so any you know any company out there in the private equity market you know anybody that's de you know deeply developing technology we need we need that we we need those people for sure but i do not believe a supply chain will be able to operate without some type of human connectivity and that goes you know into simple things like relationships that you have with your carriers relationships that you have with your with your customers it doesn't all have to be people and manual and the heavy lifting there we can leverage technology to be more efficient and take more cost out of the supply chain but start with your people right start with your people and they're your biggest brand ambassadors from there i think you have to move into it's this is going to sound really really big but you have to go into digitization right you have to be in the digital marketing space especially for a startup you have to make every dollar that you invest in marketing work hard to get a return on that dollar it's not a one for one as far as sales it's not quantitatively easy to measure these things but i would say in that digital space um brand impressions are extremely large earned media if you have expertise that's public relations right telling having somebody else tell your story um that's just your own people your own relationships you don't have to spend a lot of money doing that but you have to have rigor and you have to have knowledge and and expertise that that people are are after um, and then I think the biggest, the biggest bucket in that digital space is lead generation. Mm -hmm. And so, right, you, we have to use digital platforms to develop inbound leads for in conjunction with what our sales teams are doing and our BDR teams are doing. We have to use those digital channels to get people into the funnel. And we need to, you know, the funnel, the, 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 the buying funnel, right, is, not almost 90 percent of it is done without even talking to you it's all online websites and social media and content and all these videos and all this stuff so you have to make sure that your content and your brand is showing up in this funnel to these buyers all the way through because it doesn't get until way way down where they pick up the phone and say hey jeff i i know a lot about you you don't think i do but i do because i've been researching you yep. now i need to really go deeper and find out what else is what else is going is going on with you so i would say getting in that in that uh digital space is is important but really you tie all that stuff together what that really comes back to is what's your strategy going to be is it going to be a brand strategy is it going to be a lead gen strategy uh is it going to be a content strategy are we is it going to be a sales enablement or sales support strategy it's gonna be account management strategy. What are the marketing you know, pillars that you're going to go to market with? And if you don't have that defined, you can garbage out a lot of money, right? You can spend, 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 and then somebody says, well, hey, what's the ROI and where are the metrics? Right. So part of your strategy has to have this core set of metrics that are meaningful to the business. Clicks and website visits and that kind of stuff it has to go deeper, it has to go deeper than that. It has to be connected to the business. Yes, I, uh, I, I definitely agree. You know, um, I'm in the midst of doing that right now, Mark. You know, here I am, the bodacious cowboy, a trade name that I've got, that I've marketed, that I registered. I didn't create, a good buddy of mine did, and it took off. Um, you know, even with the show and, and trying to do the right things and get the right audience and have people like yourself in there that, um you know can tell a story because that's what logistics is all about it's about telling the right story at the right time and how it impacts other people's lives and how is it going to make their businesses move forward and i i love doing this kind of stuff but it's so pertinent to your success you know whether it's in your business or in personal life because it, it actually works on both sides of the fence and you really don't 
know that. But, you know, each human being out there every single day are selling themselves. They don't realize that, but you're selling yourself to friends. Even if you walk into a grocery store or, you know, or go into a movie and say hello to somebody, you know, it, it, it's you as an individual. You can't fake it to make it by any means. You know, you have to be yourself. And that's what's so pertinent in the logistics and supply chain industry. You know, you can't fake it to make it. And everything that you do is, is actually relates to what and and what you do, what you do and how you do it as a business uh, partner or a business owner. So you have to be cognizant of that. Yeah, and and the biggest probably the biggest takeaway anybody could take on, off of, of off of what you had just said is leave any situation or any person with a positive experience. That's right. It. It's, like, it's like the, and you go into the digital world, right. And Gen Z and all that, that's the five star rating, right. We're all, we all can rate now. Right. And I think some of the, you know, maybe more uh, mature audiences of the business world or the logistics world, they don't buy into that. Right. Well, a right. rating doesn't mean anything, but it does. Glassdoor has ratings for employees, right? J.D. Powers and Associates has ratings, right? People are on safety and people do care about ratings. The younger generation coming up, the millennials, the Gen Zs, these are all, they're very rate, rate heavy, right? They're technology natives and, uh, and the ratings. So that experience, that positive experience and that positive rating, that net promoter score, that NPS, that is the number one thing um, that you can leave with people. And I'll share a, a, a customer story with you. I was talking to one of our customers the other day, a, a person who pretty much ran, let's say, you know, a billion dollars worth of truckload freight. Wow. And uh, in this annually, it's a large, large company, right? Sure. And I was asking him about our service. Like I said, in these types of markets, service is king. Execution is king. And you got to service the heck out of your customers. And you got to market service and execution. And I was talking to him about our service and all that. And he says, listen, last month, you all hauled 1,800 loads for me. And I never even knew that you did it. That's perfect. And he said, that's the kind of providers that I need. If you're in my meetings and we're talking about you, you're likely being shuffled out of the network and out of the door. If you're never mentioned at our meetings, you're doing something right and please keep doing it. Yeah. So I always think about that. You know, that's a lot of loads to move to not have the top guy hear about it at all. And that was a good, that's a positive experience. Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, it's when we, spoke to our clients we used to be transparent and bring in the carriers we wouldn't talk about rates we would just talk about the operations and what's working what's not working so that everybody would get on the same page and then what i would do is i would send out uh, quarterly surveys right before the qbrs and i would say it was very simple hey how are we doing you know what's working what's not working let us know you know, you're only as good as the last shipment you moved. You can have, a, you know, a billion data boys. The only one they're going to remember is the one that went astray and didn't go as well as everyone else. And so when you are servicing your customers, it's always the number one shipment, no matter how many shipments that you move, that you knock it out of the park because that's sustainability. That shows them that you're consistent and that you know exactly what you're doing. But you all, always have to bring in um, other value. You know, that's what they look for. Once that value stops, that volume stream, they'll move on to someone else that can supply something that you didn't offer. Because shippers, you know, prospects, they're always looking for better, constantly, all the time. When I was on their side, that's what I was doing. You know, you have to, you have to keep everyone honest and on the same page. And sometimes they take your quotes and they bid it against you to see if you're willing to go down. The biggest question that I asked uh, clients, well, why would you do that? What, where did I fail that want, that made you want to go and rebid what I've been doing for a year or two? You know, um, it's those questions. You have to be a better listener than a, than a talker for sure.
Yeah. Um, can you share with the group like one or two things about what they tell you? Why they would do that? Why would they do that? Well, yeah. one thing is that communication, collaboration, unable, unable to tell them before they tell you. Um, that's very important. If you know something's going wrong, you don't wait. You get you get involved with them and you tell them, hey, you know what? I know you don't want to hear this, but this just happened. You may get notified by so-and-so or whatever. Um, I think we just cut out, but we're back. We're back on. You can hear me? I am. Yeah, I did. I think I did go away. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries. So, you know, the biggest thing is, um, always beat them to the punch. Don't wait them to contact you. If there's problems, um, at their facilities, I, matter of fact, this morning, I just had one, you know, when my, uh, my customer I was telling you about in the green room. You know, he says, well, listen, we don't have um, we don't have the amount of loads that we, we used to we'll consolidate them. So instead of just one uh, one pick, one delivery, we're going to have uh, two picks, two deliveries on that. Can you do that? You know, and then I opened up and said, hey, by the way, do you know when you're sending me over to the tenders, you're saying that the load is ready today, but you'll send me the tender tomorrow. Isn't a tender supposed to be like when it's ready? And when you say it's ready, it's not. That's the way you have to have those kind of conversations with your customers. You got to be willing to say no. You have to be willing to tell them what they don't want to hear and definitely what they do want to hear. I put myself in the position of a shipper, uh, Mark, because I was in that area for a very long time. And I always criticize how would I feel if somebody told me what I'm going to tell someone else, you know, and especially when you're managing $100 million worth of freight. You will not have time for BS. You want transparency. You want to know exactly what's happening. And when you have that mistrust, they're out the door. I mean, there's no two ways about it um, because that just tells them, well, if it's going to happen now, it's going to happen again, and it's going to be repetitive, and you don't want to put yourself in a position like that. Yeah, I, I, I always, I, when I talk to clients, when I talk to shippers, I'm always asking them to like, what are the most important things to you and, and where do, where do providers fall down the most, right? Why would you be rebid our freight? What's going on? Communication is very rarely covered in any kind of marketing content across the space. Um, you just don't see, a, you get a lot of visibility, right? That that's a buzz term. We all know we all yep. use. There's that. But this idea of communication, it's not really covered, but that's what they all say. We need better communication, more communication, earlier communication. Even if you've made a mistake, communicate it. We're going to forgive. We're going to work together to solve the, the problem there. But it doesn't solve itself without communication. And, uh, and I think that's something we can all continue to improve on. And there's layers and layers and layers of communication across yes. the entire, the entire supply chain spectrum. Um, and, and, and speaking of that, you know, you talked about like bid, bidding freight out, there's a continuum, right? Yeah. That, that buyers and logistics follow and on the left, right. Is spot market freight. Yeah. Right? And then, then way over here on the right is outsource, managed logistics outsource, right? And right. in between there, there's about four or five other buckets on how people procure or want to work with their providers. And it's really important to understand which ones go together, which ones stand alone, which ones you, you which mo mode and model you're in today, where might you be a year from now or six months from now or 90 days from now, but understanding what that continuum is and then building messaging, building marketing, building communication around that is a really smart thing to do for, uh, for, a, for, a, for any brand within the space. Yes. Um... Uh, absolutely, because you know that's that's the downfall right there. That 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 really is. You, you have to be on top of that, and and like I said, transparency, communication. Why people don't collaborate the way that they should is beyond me. I still can't answer that today, but it's so it's such a monumental piece of doing business and building those long term business relationships like like with myself mark 
you know, I'm not a tran um, uh, transactional broker. I only go for the big hitters because I just think to myself that, you know, there's less control, there's more risk when you have more, more clients and more different carriers. You're not feeding them, they're not feeding you. You have no idea about the consistency, the frequency in which they're gonna give you a call and you don't have that ability but when uh, to build those relationships but when you have consistent dedicated freight this is the time that you can build upon and build those relationships where the dock worker supervisor gets to know their their daily uh driver who bumps their docks and they build that working relationship and they bring coffee or they have pizza for them and you know it's um it, that's the way to go at least the way i look at it because there's a lot of lost leaders in there especially you were talking about the roi you have to look at at your uh, portfolio you have to look at your funnel and the prospects and and customers that you have and, and what the return is on the investment and the investment is, is the time that you spend managing um that specific client and not all freight prospects or customers or good prospects, good customers and good freight. And you have to know when to back out of it. And it's worked for us. I'm just curious about your thoughts on that. Well, I think what, you know, one, th one word that comes to mind as you, as you speak to all that is culture, mm -hmm. right? And I think culture is, can be tied to communication as well. I and mean, if you have like cultures, if you have similar beliefs and values, right, that your organization promotes and you're aligned with other organizations that also have those beliefs, have those values, you're culturally aligned. Therefore, your communications is going to be way, way better. And uh, I think if you could hit that highest level of communication and cultural alignment within an organization while maintaining a, a fair, you know, the best combination of price and service, I don't think you'd ever lose. I don't think you'd ever lose with that, you know, with that, with that client. But it's when the communication fails or maybe there's, you know, cultures change, right? People yes. Can grow, can grow apart, or people sometimes they ignore, you know, they ignore communication, they ignore culture, and then they get into these organizations based on just the cold facts, right? The hard facts of, of cost, and then they find themselves having, you know, less than desired service, or there's something on the back end of their clients that is not working well. So those are by, those are check boxes that I think everybody should be thinking about. And if I were, like you said, a shipper yourselves, and I, I would doing research and different stuff i'd be looking for if people are messaging around communication and transparency and and visibility and things like that but that that keyword of communication and culture i think are two really big things we we see our best and largest clients we have good communication with um and we we try to extend that to all clients uh but there's a cultural connection and we have the same beliefs and the same values and therefore we're working together as a team not not fighting each other yeah it's all about congruency right seeing eye to eye and and getting yourself embedded into their operations so that you have you're a standing business you're standing individual and once you get to their board table as i call mahogany row and they invite you into those you know those conversations about the operations you know you're embedded into then and you're there for a long period of time um, and that's what we try to do and i'm sure you do the same thing and that's why you have the sustainability and what i call the sustainability code code and un uncovering that so that you have standing power you know and that's what it's all about especially in a market like today you know building building that up so that you know that you're there for them and they are there for you and that's what makes a, a good long-term business relationship work. Yeah, continuity. That's another word, right? That that's around everything you just said and what we were talking about. And funny enough, most most people don't think about continuity or continuity planning. Uh, but whether you're a, a shipper or a carrier, I talked to a lot of carriers uh, in my career and and even today. And you know, the carriers have a hard job. Drivers, they have the, hard job, the hardest job out there. Absolutely. And uh, 
and and they have to fight things, you know, natural forces, right? Weather and hurricanes, and you know, especially uh, blue grace uh, logistics being in Tampa, Florida. You know, there's there's a lot of things that you face diversity for, and people want ideas and thoughts and recommendations on, you know, how do I weather those storms and how yeah. do I have a better approach? Well, one thing I always say is, ask your customers what their continuity plan is. Mm -hmm. If they had some kind of disaster, what are they going to be doing and how can you become part of that plan? Vice versa. If you have that, how can you invite your relationships, your stakeholders, your customers into knowing you're business savvy and smart enough to have a continuity plan and share that with them? So if they could have a part in it, maybe they would volunteer uh, aligning with you on those things. But the continuity um is a really, really important thing between organizations. Oh, a a absolutely. And and just in real short, um, talk about uh, continuity planning. Um, you know, when you are up in that uh, specific, you know, either director, VP, or even your role, uh, large corporations will not let those senior people fly on the same plane, uh, plane for that simple reason, because if it went down, their business would close. So they would make sure that one had a six o'clock AM flight, a nine, so forth and so on for that simple reason. You know, how are we going um, to move forward and keep this business going? And that's all part of the, you know, what you were saying about the planning and, and doing it uh, correctly. A lot of people don't think about that. They don't, but they should. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, Blue Grace just published today their very first ever our inaugural ESG, ESG report. You know, which is kind of a, a you know, it's 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 sustainability, right? A code yeah. for sustainability, um, but dealing with those three three separate areas of, uh, of environmental, societal, and governance, and uh, and just having something like that out there for your stakeholders to engage and when i mean stakeholders it's not just customers right right there's, there's shippers there's carriers there's vendors suppliers there's employees these you know there's your communities i mean these people they they do care deeply about that and uh and having that type of information available to them helps the conversation and that helps the business and that helps the communication and it it just becomes additive and more additive um, you know, when you're doing things like that from a, a marketing, a brand, uh, and an external facing and internal facing um, environment. Yeah, yeah. So, listen, we're almost uh, to the end of the show. Tell everybody about the TMSA and what's coming up and what are you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. TMSA is, a, is the acronym for Transportation Marketing and Sales Association. We're a trade nonprofit and we're focused on the education network and access for logistics, sales and marketing individuals. So if you hold any of those roles or have oversight of those roles, often we find chief operating officers, CEOs, CFOs can have oversight over these uh, these types of roles. Uh, TMSA is a, is a great destination for you if you're looking to deepen your education. Uh, and your access on sales or, or marketing, and that's any avenue uh, and all encompassing of, of sales and marketing. And uh, the next big event that TMSA has is in October, it's in Chicago, it's our executive forum. So if you are a logistics executive uh, and you would like to attend, we, we'll see you for a two day event in Chicago. We're also um, having, or one of our uh, partner organizations, um, is also having a leadership conference there. So it might be a good opportunity for you to come and get some exposure and some education on the on the conference side. But if you have general managers, you know, we spent a large portion of the uh, the earlier conversation on training. Yeah. That leadership training, the situational leadership training that's, uh, that's going on there as well might be a great way to bring a manager, a general manager, uh, a rising star, you know, somebody that is, uh, is, is looking for their next step. Um, and then also, if you, uh, if you, if you uh, visit TMSAToday.org, you'll find all kinds of information on the events, the content, 
uh, the the different uh, the different gatherings and and, and different uh, opportunities that, that TMSA has has and you know and I always say this TMSA is a trade nonprofit so mm-hmm. all of the dollars that are coming in we are just putting back into programs to assist this industry and these professionals within this this industry who who have these very very important jobs. That's awesome, you know, and, and thank you for telling everybody who, how they can uh, get in contact and uh, where they can get all this information. I appreciate that. You know, we also have a, um, a great event coming up in October, actually the uh, the 12th of, well, if I get that, there it goes, uh, the 12th and 13th, uh, the Carrier Broker Summit in Tampa. It's going to be a great event. Um, there'll be a lot of people there, especially the brokers and the carriers. I'm going to be a speaker down there talking about the shipper side of the business and what we discussed here today about how important the collaboration is and understanding how each operation works. So we're looking forward to that. Um, Also, some other good news. Um, I also... uh... Sorry about that. I hit that too early. Um, And that happens, right? I also got a, uh, a brand new sponsor, uh, Total Connection. More to follow on that. So I'm looking forward to them uh, to, uh, you know, uh, help me out in what I do daily and trying to share pertinent information and get guests like yourself on today. Uh, Mark, I appreciate you coming on and spending some time with us today. Yeah, it's been a great privilege. Thanks again for having me. Lots of fun. Yeah, well, I'll definitely have you back. So everybody out there, thanks again for joining us today. On the Storytelling Chronicles, I'm the Bodacious Cowboy, and I'm out. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you.